Green Islander and Tim Bonner, who's chief executive of the Countryside Alliance, and it is, of course, actor and writer, Femi Nalanda. Femi, I will start with you. Is the countryside racist? Uh, well, I think what we need to understand here is that Britain itself has a lot of problems with racism. And when you have areas which have a very, very, very small amount of minorities, sometimes those problems are amplified. Um, if you're a minority growing up in a region where there's barely anyone around you, I mean, one of the things which helps to combat racism is people growing up in diverse areas, people growing up with people who are Muslim, people who are black, people who are white, people who are um, from everywhere in the world together. And that's one of the things which combats this. When you have areas which, because of largely because of economic reasons, but also because of the history of migration to this country, have very, very small amounts of minorities, sometimes those minorities can be seen as outsiders a little bit more than in urban areas. Uh, people aren't used to them as much. Stop and search rates in part of the countryside were found to be up to 17.5 high 17.5 times higher than 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 white citizens or white white people in the area um so it's not that the countryside is like this awful horrific racist place it's that mm. there are hard it's, it's harder sometimes as a person a minority person to exist okay. in the countryside because of the fact that you've got these imbalances all right tim i will bring you into this now same question to you do you think that the countryside is racist no, I don't. Um, but I would agree with a lot that Femi said. Um, there is a historic um, issue around uh, around the, the fact that the countryside is a very white place, and that's because immigration is mostly into urban areas, and um, you know, there, there hasn't been a lot of movement of ethnic minorities into rural communities over uh, you know over the last decades or, or, or centuries. Um, but that Tim, is a, can a I just ask? Sorry on, the, on that. Sorry, Tim. Can I just ask? Can I just ask that on that? Racist. And, and, and suggesting that, 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 that the countryside is white. OK, Tim, can I just ask on that? Why, why is it an issue? You said that there, there is a historic issue with it being mostly white. But when I look I, at I think, it... I think, the, issue, I think the issue is that, um, understandably, and I've used comparisons before about, you know, I've travelled a lot around Britain, and you can walk, I, I can walk into a pub in West Wales where everyone's speaking Welsh as an Englishman, and, you know, I have a feeling of other. Uh, and I think it yeah. is entirely understandable that if you go into a community which is very white um, and you're from an ethnic minority, then you are going to have a feeling of other. Um, and, you know, Femi is in a better position to talk to me about that. But I think there is a really important point that, you know, just from a, from, from a practical point of view, the countryside... Um, should be looking to encourage uh, people from ethnic minorities to visit, to, 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 to contribute, to, to, to uh, boost the rural economy. And right. so we should be looking at every possible way of ensuring people feel that they are welcome, uh, whatever their okay. colour, wherever they're from, when they come to the countryside. All right, Femi, I, I used to live in the Lake District, so I spent years there, which is very, very rural, and it's very, very beautiful, and I couldn't see any obvious barriers to anyone from an ethnic minority background wanted to come and enjoy the countryside, other than the fact that most of the people who lived there were white. And I'm just wondering if, if that makes people feel uncomfortable. Is that not maybe someone else's problem, not the residents of the countryside? Uh, well, I think this, again, is something which is larger than just saying, oh, these horrific, these people, these people in the countryside are racist. It's something which comes to down to economics a, a lot of the time as well. Um, if you're an inner city youth in, in London or even in Manchester, let's say you mentioned the Lake District, Manchester's closer to the Lake District. It has a large um, Afro-Caribbean um, population. Um, going there is one thing, finding the money to go there, to travel there, to take the train, this, that, and the rest, visiting. Living in the Lake District, someone who wants to relocate to the Lake District, it's not going to be economically viable for someone there living in Side. There were three council estates right? and... in Kendall alone when I lived there. Three council estates in Kendall alone. There is an absolute out-and-out -out myth, Femi, that every single person who lives in the countryside has got a massive six-bedroom house. There is a lot of people from low economic backgrounds. Is Candle, is Candle the, the Lake District? I mean, you mentioned the Lake District as a very particular, very beautiful part um, of the, um, like, a very specific part. And the truth is that there is a disparity between, um, of course, there is always going to be, there's always going to be, I mean, I'm not saying everyone in the countryside is 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 wealthy. And that's, that's, that's as you say, that's a myth. Not everyone in the countryside is wealthy. Um, but large swathes of the countryside do have, um, 
landowners who own a lot of land, who are able to corner this land off to themselves and who live a life that can only be described as middle class. You don't have um, the same kind of level of density as you do in urban areas. And because of this, you don't find the same concentration of um, of of people who are less well off, and people who are less well off often happen to be people from ethnic minorities. Um, also, as we know that, as I said before, the history of migration to the UK, people, Windrush generation, people came to industrial centres because they were supposed to be working in these industrial centres. People came to Manchester, they came to they came to um, London, they came to Liverpool, etc. Yeah. Um, and so it's, it's 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 just the way that history has panned out. Okay. All, all right, Tim. I'll I'll let you come back to that. Yeah, I, I'm getting we're getting involved in some some really simple but wrong stereotypes about the countryside here. I mean, that some of the poorest wards in in um, in in Britain, um, in council wards in Britain, you could find in in West Cumbria. Yeah, Cumbria is one of the you know has some areas of deep deprivation. So the idea somehow that this is you know it's a sort of middle class area in itself is a lazy urban trope. Uh, I, I personally think, and, and from all my experiences, the, this, this sort of constant line of the sort of, you know, the, 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 the racist yokels in the countryside is equally a really lazy stereotype, a, a metropolitan stereotype. But as I said, that doesn't mean that there isn't an issue for people from ethnic minorities it, visiting what is a very, you know, what are very white communities. Um, and that's a challenge for both both sides, I think, the people in the countryside need to need need to think really carefully about how they how they are perceived, um, and we need to encourage people to understand that they are welcome and that they can enjoy the countryside as much as you know as as much as as everyone else, because it's in everyone's benefit that I think minorities mm. do feel that they're welcome, um, but that you know that that feeling that they might have and the fact that the countryside is largely white absolutely doesn't mean they're racist. In fact, all the evidence is when, when the BNP were having electoral success you know, 10, 15 years ago, it was in urban areas that people were voting for them. It was never in rural areas. They weren't being elected onto councils in Suffolk or, 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 yeah. or, or Hertfordshire. This, this was the, you know, racism okay. and, and racist political parties have always been urban-based in the UK. Okay. Can I just if ask I can, you, if I can you, add something? Yeah, go on. Yeah. Could I add something there? I, I definitely agree as well. As I said before, sometimes you've got that element of people feeling like they're outsiders because of um, the fact that they're in an area where there's not a lot of ethnic minorities. But just as you've said, sometimes racism itself can be exacerbated by the fact that you have um, a large minority community and you have people who feel like, oh, they're taking over, they're taking this, that, the rest. If you look yeah. at places like Birmingham and this, that, the rest, some very urban areas, the fact that there are large ethnic minority communities has led to a backlash, which itself has. Okay. So urban uh, uh, areas yeah. are not... Absolutely. <laughs> I just want one more, I just I want one more with you, Femi, if that's, if, I mean, if that's right. I just want one more towards you, um, just on specifically about the countryside, right, which is if people choose to see racism or potential racial connotations anywhere, you could argue they could find it, right? You could see it, as we've just described there, in densely populated urban areas. You, you could, if you wanted to, maybe see it in a all-white rural country pub in South Wales or somewhere. Do you think that when people come out and write things about, like, how the countryside has got a problem with race, etc., it actually undermines, I would argue, maybe genuine racism in this country? Uh, well, I think... As I say, racism in this—I mean, the UK is it has it has a history um, of kind of colonialism and slavery, and there is large kind of repercussions to that, which means that there are people in the country that believe in racial superiority, that are very, very, very anti-immigration, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and that exists in different pockets. And the person who wrote this article in the Guardian, I believe, he comes from mm. the countryside. He grew up in the countryside, and he was writing about his own experience. He never said within the article the countryside is worse than the mm. um, than, than urban areas. He never said it's horrific. It, it, like okay. it, I think definitely when people are talking about their own lived experiences and they grew up in a certain area, they're allowed to do that. Oh. They're allowed to talk about the particulars of that. I think. Um, but yeah, we should always be balanced about these things and we shouldn't make it out like all, all of right. these rural farmers off there are racist and everyone else is, <laughs> gets off well, scot-free. Exactly that, exactly that. Fair. Look, thank you very much, both of you. It's been great to have you both on the show. Femi Nalanda, who's actor and a writer, and Tim Bono, who's chief executive of the Countryside Alliance. Great stuff, that.